welcome to the Senior Living 411 series. November is Fall Prevention Month, and today is day four of my 30-day quest to present you with some useful information for the whole month of November. Today's topic is the 411 on is it time to talk about fall prevention? Now, for those of you who haven't joined me for a previous show, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself first. My name is Desiree King and I'm a Senior Home Safety Advisor here in Ontario. I wanted to first share my story with you, as I said. And the first question that I'm often asked when I deliver seminars to groups such as this is, what do you know about aging? You're so young, or why do you care? And my honest answer is that it's my passion. Now, I'm going to date myself here, so promise not to ask me my age. But when I was 14, I volunteered to work as a candy striper. That's right. How many of you remember candy stripers? We wore that red and white apron. And in my case, I walked around the hospitals and delivered books to geriatric patients on the geriatric floor. I then went on to work as a dietary aide in the geriatric ward of a hospital. And throughout my high school years and since then, I've worked in or owned several senior related businesses. Most recently, I was a realtor for the past six years who specialized in working with the 55 plus demographic. I've taken a plethora of courses in aging in place, downsizing, retirement living, options, and dementia care. I've also worked as a client care coordinator for one of the leading home care companies in North America. I must admit that during my time as a realtor, I've always felt a pull towards the educating and serving side of the business, more so than the real estate transaction side. So at the beginning of 2020, I knew that something in my life was going to change. I knew that my calling was greater than my career. Little did I know or anyone know that we'd be hit with a pandemic called COVID. And over the past seven months, COVID has killed roughly 9,822 Canadians. 81% of these deaths are linked to long-term care homes. Health officials have cited the need for rigorous visitor and resident care protocols and precautions in these facilities. But the solution is also in our hands. We, as a people, as the future elderly population of this country have to make some decisions as well. I firmly believe that we as Canadians need to change our way of thinking and method of caring for the elderly. One possible solution is that we honor the wishes of our elderly members of society and allow them to stay at home by doing what places like Scotland have done and pour money into home modifications and home health care as opposed to hospital funding. Over the past two months, as I sat at home listening to the news and watching the number of deaths occur with our seniors, I realized that I wanted to do more than I was already doing. I realized that being a realtor did not align with my desire to have a greater impact on the lives of seniors. The ancient Greek physician Hippocrates once said, drastic times call for drastic measures. My drastic measure? Well, it took the form of me officially resigning from real estate and turning my attention to my one thing, which was senior home safety. While many seniors want to stay at home safely, their homes are not equipped to do so. In preparation for what I see to be a shift in the mindset of seniors, their adult children, and society on the whole, my main objective is to assist families in figuring out what is wrong in the homes of themselves or their loved ones and what needs to be addressed in order to allow our seniors to be safe in their own homes. Now, why is fall prevention important? Number one, falls are common. Falls are the leading cause of fatal and non-fatal injuries for older Canadians. As a matter of fact, one in four older adults falls each year. Every 11 seconds, an older adult is treated in the emergency room for a fall. And every 19 minutes, an older adult dies from a fall. This presentation is about 30 minutes long, and by the time we're over, well, you can do the math. Falls are also can cause serious injuries. Falls result in injuries such as hip fractures, broken bones, and head injuries. In fact, more than 2.8 million older adults are treated in emergency departments annually because of a fall resulting in over 800,000 hospitalizations. Falls are costly. The average hospital cost for a fall injury is over $30,000. Falls with or without injury also carry a heaven, heavy burden on the quality of life. After a fall, many older adults develop a fear of falling 
And as a result, they limit their activities and social engagement. Fear of falling can result in further physical decline, depression, social isolation, and feelings of helplessness. And lastly, falls impact caregivers too. We had a wonderful conversation in the first part of this series on caregivers last night. And research has shown that after a care recipient's first fall, caregivers report a significant increase in caregiver burden, fear of falling, and depression. Research has also shown that the toll on the family caregiver's health appears to increase over time. If you can prevent a fall, whether it is as the caregiver or the person you are caring for, you can save time, stress, and money. Now, fall prevention is a team effort. There are others who want to help you maintain your and your loved one's mobility and reduce the risk of falling and injury. Over the past three days, we are going to highlight three steps designed to help you most effectively prevent a serious injury, stay healthy, and importantly, maintain an independent lifestyle. Use the information gathered in these topics to start a conversation with the person you are caring for to determine if they're at risk for a fall, and also to identify whether you may be at risk for a fall and develop an action plan to ensure that you are a strong and healthy caregiver. The first step is to complete a fall risk assessment checklist. This checklist will help determine if you or the person you are caring for is at risk for a fall and if further action is needed. It is meant to be answered individually. Now answer the questions for yourself first, then answer them for the person you're caring for. An individual score of four or more points indicates that person may be at risk for a future serious fall. First question, those who I have fallen in the past year, yes or no? Those who fall are two to three times more likely to fall again. As a matter of fact, about half, which is about 53% of the older adults who are discharged for fall-related hip fractures will experience another fall within six months. So you can go ahead, jot this question down. There's lots of forms you can find online as well. And if it's a yes, it's two points. If it's a no, it's none. The next question is, I can or have been advised to use a cane or walker to get around safely. People who have been advised to use a cane or walker may already be more likely to fall. While a cane might help with mobility, it could also make it more difficult for people to stabilize themselves during a fall. Focus also has to be placed on how one recovers from loss of balance. Someone who needs a walking aid should be given balance and gait exercises and then be trained to safely use a walker or cane, including proper gait patterns and ways to avoid falls. The training should also include complicated maneuvers like opening and closing doors with the aid. The next question is sometimes statement, sometimes I feel unsteady when I'm walking. Note that these answers now are the yeses are worth one point and the noes are worth none. Unsteadiness or needing support while walking are signs of poor balance. An unsteady gait can encompass several different symptoms. Examples may include dizziness or vertigo when walking, shuffling when walking, instability or lacking balance, or unsteadiness. People with a chronically unsteady gait often have a wide stance when walking. They may walk slow and exhibit caution when walking and may even stumble. The next statement, I steady myself by holding onto furniture when walking at home. This is also a sign of poor balance. The next statement, I am worried about falling. People who are worried about falling are more likely to fall. The fear of falling becomes more common as people age, even among those who haven't fallen. It may lead older people to avoid activities such as walking, shopping, or taking part in social activities. I need to push with my hands to stand up from a chair. For many people, the simple act of getting up from a seated position can be a challenge. The ordinary activities of standing and sitting are so basic that we take them for granted until the day when we have to push and push and push again before achieving liftoff. Difficulty in standing up from a chair can be due to a combination of reasons. Weakness of the legs, Stiffness in the back, poor balance, 
fear of falling, lack of flexibility in the ankles, lack of range of motion in the knees, tightness of the hamstring muscles on the back of the thighs, and improper technique. I have trouble stepping up onto a curb. This is also a sign of weak leg muscles. Difficulty stepping up onto a street curb is a unique indicator of fall risk because curbs lack a handrail for leverage or support. I often have to rush to the toilet. Rushing to the bathroom, especially at night, increases your chance of falling. If you have a bladder or bowel condition that causes you to rush to the toilet or visit more, than, more often during the day or night, you could be at an increased risk of falling. This is especially the case if, you've already, if you're already unsteady on your feet or feel dizzy when getting up from sitting or lying down. If you have to go to the bathroom more than once during six to eight hours of sleep, you might have nocturia. Your body may, take too much, may make too much urine or your bladder can't hold enough. Sometimes it's both. There are many possible causes. Some need medical treatment, others you can manage on your own. The older you are, the more likely you are to need to pee at night. As you age, your body produces less of a hormone that helps concentrate urine so that you can hold it until the morning. When you're older, you're also more likely to have other health problems that make you pee, want to pee at night. Your gender can also play a role. For example, men, an enlarged prostate is common when you're an older guy. It usually isn't serious, but it can keep you from emptying your bladder. And woman, after menopause, you make less estrogen. That can cause changes in the urinary tract that make you have to go more often. If you've had children, the muscles in your pelvis may be weaker too. Some medicines pull fluid out of your system and make you pee more. Ask your doctor if any of your meds do this. You might solve the problem by taking them earlier in the day, or the doctor may be able to change your prescription. When you're older, nocturia also raises your chances of falling and breaking a hip. I had one family that I was helping, and the father had, uh, he had falling challenges in the past. He was supposed to really have someone with him 24-7 monitoring him, and he didn't. So one night he got up to go to the washroom and they don't know what really time, but the next day they found him on the floor. Probably they'd guess he'd been on the floor for about 12 hours. He was dead. What had happened was he went into the washroom in a rush probably and slipped on his own urine. And because he didn't have anyone there to, to come and take care of him when he fell, his brain caused swelling and you can guess what happened next. So definitely, this is one I want you to really pay attention of. Um, there is possibilities if you, if you need someone to look after you in the night, you can look at home care options, but definitely something to be taken quite seriously. I have lost some feelings in my feet. Numbness in your feet can cause stumbles and lead to falls. Foot numbness is usually due to a lack of blood supply to an area or nerve damage. Foot numbness can also result from a series of complications. If you're experiencing this, see your physician. I take medicine that sometimes make me feel lightheaded or more tired than usual. Self-explanatory. I take medicine to help me sleep or improve my mood. These medicines can sometimes increase your chance of falling. Side effects from medicines can sometimes increase your chances of falling. Medications that suppress the central nervous system are among those most likely to contribute to falling as they reduce alertness and cause slower reactions and movements. There is a significant association between falls and the use of sedatives and hypnotics, antidepressants and benzodiazepines, which are a type of sedative. I often feel sad or depressed. Symptoms of depression, such as not feeling well or slowed down, are definitely linked to falls. Now, after you're finished doing the survey, uh, you would add up the numbers of, of points for each yes answer. If you scored four or more points, you may be at risk of falling. If you or the person you are caring for is at risk of falling based on these questions, the next step is to have a conversation with family, friends, or those in the community who may be supportive. Join us tomorrow. Thursday, November 5th, 
for step two, when we discuss how to start a conversation with the person you are caring for to determine if they are at risk for a fall. It's not easy to tell a friend or family member that I'm concerned about your safety and your chances of falling. So please join me as I share some important tips that may help you have the conversation with your loved ones about your concern for their safety. Helping yourself, a spouse, or an aging parent to avoid falls goes a long way towards preserving health and independence. Thank you for joining us tonight. And remember that all discussions can also be found on YouTube on the Senior Living 411 Incorporated channel or on the Senior Living 411 podcast. Thank you and have a good night.